It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. And you all need to understand these are military weapons, these are assault frequencies. If you garner nothing more than that, that's what you need to know. It's microwave radiation warfare, is what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the National Press Club Federal Communications Commission Chairman Tom Wheeler. It's an honor uh, to be here um, at the National Press Club. The first generation wireless 1G was voice. The second generation 2G allowed both talk and text third generation, 3G, the internet, in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. This video is brought to you by the number 5 and the letter G. And pretty soon, everything else will be too. I have to tell people 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapon systems head up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually brought cover in relation to this, and the reason I became an expert was to invent them. What I'm going to say to you today do not believe a single word I say. Not one. I want you to do your own research. You'll find it's absolutely terrifying. You got your body cut? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, good lad. Right, because I can talk to that. This 5G rollup is a weapon system. I've got a letter with central government because I know about weapon systems more than anything other. In uh, Britain, in a place in the uh, north of England called Gateshead, uh, a scientist there called Mark Steele has been um, very publicly and actively warning people about the effects of LED streetlights, which he says in Gateshead are emitting now 5G. Guys, uh, what's the crack? Hey, hey, lads. I'm just having a word with these Gateshead Council workers about replacing this, uh, this, these transmitters on these lights that are causing harm and uh, assault in the community. This is an existential threat to the economy, to the environment, and humanity. Well, if these transmitters are everywhere, then everyone's at risk, surely. There's a lot of confusion about what 5G is. The G stands for generation. So you started off with the first uh, transmitter system. Back in the 1980s. In the 80s, yes. Yeah. So you had 1G, then you had 2G. And as the generations moved on, you started to see uh, more uh, complex uh, signal systems, uh, cleverer uh, pieces of uh, you know antenna designs, etc., etc. So the whole thing became uh, more data, quicker data, quicker downloads, etc., etc. However, 5G is something completely different. Alright, let's get a break though. Let's tell the people what this really is. This is the 5G transmission device. Blinking out, that's a hell of a beast, that, isn't it? These are the uninsurable transmitters. Just get a good look at that, guys, because obviously I know there's quite a few experts who want to see uh, more detail about the transmitters and the chipsets. 
have a good look boys this is the control management system mass rear there's an antenna there you see that what is this fears the rear antenna here what's that this is for fears the rear all right as you'll see it's got a driver it's got some chip there it's one chip look at the chip sets on this this is your dystopian world what did this what did gated council say i'll tell you what i think we better send some of these educated fools back to school or just send them to prison whichever is the easiest i think prison's probably better all right that's 5g guys that's 5g hardware You must consider the whole part played by electricity in nature. Human beings cannot go on developing in the same way in an atmosphere permeated on all sides by electric currents and radiations. It has an influence on the whole development of man. This life of men in the midst of electricity, notably radiant electricity, will presently affect them in such a way that they will no longer be able to understand the news which they receive so rapidly. The effect is to damp down their intelligence. Such effects are already seen today. Even today, you can notice how people understand the things that come to them with far greater difficulty than they did a few decades ago. Rudolf Steiner, 1924. Rudolf Steiner noted that in 1924, since then our atmosphere has become far more permeated with electric waves of widely diverse types. There's no doubt now that electric waves, electromagnetic forces cause direct biological effects. There's thousands of peer-reviewed papers on this subject. There's no doubt about it. But what are these effects? How are they affecting us? What can we do about it? We're now at a stage where we're putting in what's called 5G, which is a special type of broadcast for high density information transfers. And it turns out that this is the same frequency bands that are used in crowd dispersal weaponry. Five G, first and foremost, is densification. So it's significantly more transmitters at close proximity to uh, a human, and it is also a sophisticated, illegal, unlawful transmitter. What I mean by that is it is a high gain dielectric lens antenna, and what that allows five G transmitters to do is to 3D map its environment in your home. The 868 megahertz frequency is specific for battlefield interrogation systems, so sub gigahertz. It allows the signal to travel through concrete brickwork with ease, and it can actually uh, data gather. It is a target acquiring system. Phase to rear is basically radar off the battlefield. It is extremely good at identifying targets and being able to lock on the targets. And not only that, it can specifically target you as an individual. So any judge sitting on a, uh, an interesting case, let's say, any lawyer, any barrister, anybody doing any work that is potentially controversial, your life could be a threat. So the antenna design that you currently have on top of these LED streetlights masquerading as a control management system is basically battlefield interrogation equipment. The first phase of the rear unit was actually called Mammoth, used by the Germans during the Second World War to identify Allied aircraft. Obviously things have moved on significantly since then. Well, I, I joined the Royal Navy uh, in 1960 and I specialised in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave, but they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. The microwaves then were used as weapons, as they are today. 
it is a, a perfect stealth weapon and when governments don't like a group of people for instance the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base they camped they were microwaved we microwaved Catholics in Northern Ireland to make them sick uh, it, it goes on all over the world and it, it's a weapon that you don't know you're being targeted because the dose is very very low which is actually more dangerous than a high dose it's very very low and it may take a year or two but you can you can cause neurological damage and cancers with low level microwaves and you can make all your opponents sick it, it's a perfect weapon for a government our impulses are being redirected we are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own game. Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, Almost immediately, I had neighbours knocking on the door, uh, talking about children bleeding from the nose. I had images posted on Facebook. And one neighbour in particular came to my door and mentioned the fact that since the LED street lighting had been installed, she was bleeding from the nose every single night. I thought it was unbelievable. However, I spoke to another neighbour who lived not far from the first lady who mentioned this and she also confirmed that since the LED street lighting had been installed she also had started to develop nosebleeds and had never had nosebleeds before in her life. That then put me on a journey to investigate. I measured microwave radiation levels from the transmitters uh, on top of the LED street lights. Uh, the basic 868 megahertz, it was significantly higher than the current Council of Europe 1815 resolution, which is a maximum of 600 millivolts. I've measured up to th over 3,000 millivolts. Uh, five times, five to six times higher than the than the guidelines. Significantly higher than, than the current Council of Europe 1815 resolution, which states that 200 millivolts should be the maximum. The Bio-Initiative report states that it should be significantly less than that. So we've got the Council of Europe, that's, you know, the, 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 the international criminal courts are stating that, you know, the learned judges have said that 200 millivolts, and I'm measuring in bedrooms in Gateshead, minimum, minimum 600, and up to 4,000. Does this mean that in 2020, 2021, when 5G is destined to roll out globally, that you're gonna get those kind of readings everywhere all the time? Everywhere, all the time. Worse than that? Worse than that. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, requiring massive deployment of small cells. We won't wait for the standards. Now, to make this work, Five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners and that's damn important. The interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. The main issue before us today is Senate Bill 637 and Senate Bill 894, uh, the former by Senator Hewn, the latter by Senator Knopfs. We're going to invite the uh, first four witnesses in support of the legislation, and that would be John Jones with Sprint, David Lewis and Andy Emerson with AT&T, Neil Krevda with Verizon, 
and Frank Acavetti Jr. with T-Mobile. So be straight with me. Is it true? It could be. No, well, come very, on. A, it's, you know, very few no cases. Proof there at was all. an unfortunate really incident out in situation. Iowa. Yeah. Look, gentlemen, practice these words in front of the mirror. Although we are constantly exploring the subject, currently there is no direct evidence that links cell phone usage to brain cancer.